Hello, 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 for like folks, Life of the Lounge, Life of the Lounge 33, here in the Howard Cremar, uh, Paul Anderson and Shona Donaldson. Uh, hi, we're wearing through the year now, but um, still enjoying doing these, um, as I say, my favourite night of the week. Um, so, Friday night once again. Um, so, just the normal, um, we've got a, a, a nice wee beer to try and guess. Now, this is what would be called a craft lager. It's mere than a real deal, but it's Scottish, so um, if you want to fire in your guests, um, mm -hmm. oh yes, very nice. Um, now this particular one, this uh, this comes courtesy, this is a sponsorship deal here. Um, I, got, <laughs> I got this from my father-in-law, Matt Donaldson, um, he bought it and gave me it, so what else am I going to do except um, okay. use it as our beer of the week? So if you if you fancy firing in crates of lag, lager and beer, all easy, <laughs> a lazy um, promote on a Friday night. But, uh, but, like but, um, but it, it's one I had a din, and um, I thought, well, that's a great idea. We'll just use that. So so we've got a Hello. promotional beer for Matt, and here is Shona. We've got any notifications, Shona? No. Really, I've just we're all set and we're gone, and comments are coming in. So I just thought I'd say hello. We've got we're trying something a bit new tonight. We've I we've upgraded the studio. So studio one is looking quite fancy. Sh Shona mentioned that yesterday we went to go and get some shopping, and we nipped into Aldi at West Hill. And Shona was saying about oh, I saw this thing. It's a great thing. It's got a it's on a stand. It's got a, a light. It's like okay, I'm a dressing room light, but it holds a phone. So you get the phone the being room. held, and it's. It's got the light, and so um, if you're thinking we look better than normal, she We're being looks lit. good anyway. But um, <laughs> if I look better or more bleached out, it's because this fantastic bat kit, which cost us twenty pound. Okay. There you go, Imagine every that. pound's a prisoner, but we're upgrading. We're upgrading. upgrading. <laughs> That's why it maybe looks a wee bit different. I don't. I don't well, know if that looks different. It looks or not, different. Really looking at myself different. right now, I'm thinking, yeah. Well, that, there's that a that huge different. big circle right around the phone. It's circle of light. light. So, um, so no, it's uh, the lights. Can you think it looks better or worse? I think it looks better, <laughs> but the only thing I think might make me look better is a good idea. I've got a new frock on the night. I don't know if you can see it. Green. It's got yeah. pooches. Ooh, I love a frock. Both a ball of desses um, uh, dream come through a, a frock with pooches. Okay. So thank you to my mum for buying my new frock. Much appreciated. Uh, I, I, in, in my fashion front, I've, I've got a new haircut. <laughs> Did it myself. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> just, just tidied it up. Well, it, it, can the Lord give it and he take it away. Tidied it up in one respect, but it looks worse around the back than I obviously kind of see. So Dougal might be a bit of a nuisance. He's more looking about. So it was, we might hit here evacuation. Get about because he, he he comes yeah. in and rumbles with your feet and there's extra cables. So we'll see what happens. There's but, uh, uh, a few more cables. I so he's aye. he's currently lying on top of two of them. So. So, well, right, we've got the usual. Oh, yeah. What's in the box? 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 Fits in the box. Well, let's see how we shark in the box here. Ooh. I'll come in a boot so you can maybe hear it. You can admire the fancy pattern, but I don't like it, Persia. But if it's in the box, then they come for Persia. Maybe it does. I'm thinking it probably didn't, but you're possibly right. So there you go. That was maybe a bit of a clue. <laughs> well, it's a very vague clue, but um, it might be like, you might, you probably did, I might, three, two, one. They had all these clues to guess um, that the prize was. Basically. Um, you sometimes see it in Facebook or on these compilation programmes, and the clues were right impossible. I don't think well, nobody could have guessed for what it was, but... Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think you're going to guess for, for that little Okay, clue right, I'll go and so. do the notifications and read it to that. Okay. So we've got what's in the box and what's the whiskey. Well, I'm going to come out a wee bit. And um, before I start, we've got one little bit of information for next week. Because oh, yeah. obviously we're still going to be <laughs> um, in the pandemic uh, for the foreseeable future. Let's hope it sorts itself out at some point. But um, next week being Halloween weekend, we're going to do a Halloween theme night no. life of the lounge so Spooky. we're going to dress i'm going to dress up are you i um i after just as a big reveal um i'm going to dress up i care what it is i'm going to uh, oh, that's a cracker i'm i'm going to go to town with this um shona said she was going to dress up earlier so we're going to dress up we might manage to persuade the boys we could maybe hear uh, i don't know can we could get a basin of apples and 
Fire's going to win the Apple Duke competition oh, or something. Oh, that's a rubbish thing to watch. Though. Well, it's not. It's fascinating. Fascinating. They're better than snooker. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do that. Um, and I think it would be really entertaining if one of you that are up for it, and I can, some of you certainly would be, if you can dress up in Halloween get up, whatever you like, theme it only way you like, um, whether you want to be traditional, like... Um, um, some Scottish character for history, or you want to go down the modern Hollywood route to uh, Dracula or Frankenstein. Some of you might actually not hate it very much. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. I'm just a bit of fun. Yeah, I'm just trying to engage in a wee bit of entertainment, uh, a bit of fun. But um, no, but seriously, it would be quite good fun to see. And if you could fire in your pictures through the evening, I think Abdi would hear a big. A, a, a big laugh at the whole thing and um, the more creative the better and I can some folk really can go to town there's one or two folk I can that if they get dressed up they really go for it so I think since we're, we're not going to be getting together for parties or, or anything like that that would be quite quite a good bit of fun so we'll do that for next week we'll be dressed up and um, I will um, have created my tatty name my tatty a tatty lantern's crap it's not big enough a neat lantern I, I like to go for the traditional the original and the best a neat lantern it takes ten times longer how good than a pumpkin but I just like the fact that's the traditional way to do it rather the, than the imported American version which is perfectly fine but I, I, I think it's a shame if your your own traditions get kind of squeezed out by the, the kind of modern media image of it Halloween is and so we'll, we'll speak a wee bit about that and Try and theme either music and song about Halloween because there's plenty of stuff that would be suitable. So there you go. Next week is exciting. I'm looking forward to it already. So let's get going. Um, this week is the anniversary of the Battle of Dargai, the Heights of Dargai. Um, the Gordon Highlanders made a great name for themselves there. Um, so I'm going to play the pipe tune card, the Heights of Dargai, which I think took place in 1897. Um, and one of the key things that folk mind about with that is um, the Victoria Cross that was awarded to Piper Finlater who um, was shot through both ankles and he continued to play well wounded to encourage the troops while playing in an uh, exposed position so the, so the, 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 the native troops were, <laughs> were sniping at him but he, he kept playing and um, was given a a VC by Queen Victoria. <coughs> it's in the Gordon Highlanders Museum to this day. Um, I think I played this at, at some point. You alright there? <coughs> Actually, I'm going to hit the door shoot. Right, well, I'll, I'll just play on. Um, so we're going to start with that, and then I'm going to go into Loch Inside, which is in that beautiful um, pipe march. Um, and then I'm going to go into a, we're going to play the Cairnwell Pass, which is one of my own tunes. We're at the first place we went for a run in the car, when we were kind of allowed to go to the, the, the how um, just a bit earlier in the year. First place we went, I ran up to Cairnwell, uh, up to up beyond Bremar to the ski slopes, and uh, the boys and myself had a wee walk up the hill, up on the uh, glass mall, and then come back. And while I was up there, I, I wrote this tune in my head, and then noted it doing on a bit of paper. And then I'm going to play a tune I wrote for a, an old pal. Uh, Sorry. You've just pulled the plug out. Sorry. Um, I'll put the light back. <laughs> Sorry. It's so um, technical. Yeah, we're going to play a tune called The Top of Tom the Bat, which um, I wrote for Edward Stewart um, on the occasion of his 80th birthday, but also, not just that, the occasion of oh, his 1000th summit of Tom and the Bat near Tom and Tom. So, um, a great character, but I just thought I'd give that a diddle as well. So, the heights of the guy.
few notifications. I've got a very long list of hellos. Um, oh, a few folk were saying, I, I, I mistakenly said get your guesses in for your whiskey. I'm sorry, it's no whiskey. That's it's a, a lot of whiskey, folks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beer tonight. Lager. I, I like a big drum, but maybe not quite <laughs> to that extent. Right, okay, so hellos. Leah, Ross Wallopin, Bucky, Lorelei Bach. Hello, Lorelei, Gordon Calder and Bonnie Whitney. Julian Needham and David Curry and Tarland. Karen Fraser and Abbein, uh, Joan Pat, Aitken and Kerry, Andrew Brandy is watching, Harry Lash in the Netherlands, Sandy White, Morag and Robin Dempsey, Alan and Rona Taylor out in Afford, Tommy Webster, I'm not sure if Sonia's watching the night or no, uh, Sue Taylor up in Orkney, Jim and Kate Taylor in uh, Garlogi, Ulla in Sweden in Stockholm, Bruce Anderson's watching, Heather Morrison in Stran, Shirley and John Fuchs are watching, Anne Wyatt and Paul Gray, the sausage rolls are just coming out the oven oh, in Lumfannon. Good. Uh can just about smell them from here. <laughs> Quite fancy I've just as well. Sniff on it's a craft please, it's only a few, about four or five miles actually. It's very it's very close. Uh Doreen and Sandy Petrie and Mary Cooter, uh Ian and Anne, your mum and dad, just up the road. Uh Tracy and Hugh Adelsey are watching uh, my mum and dad, Grace and Matt. Uh Doreen Wood is watching, she's in a dressing gown, she says. I suppose that's a great thing about being at home. You, you can you couldn't really wear your dressing gown out to a concert, could you? Well you could, but you'd get funny looks. You would huh? Oh, actually, I got a dressing gown for my anniversary present. That would be right, don't mm -hmm. it? It might, it might sound like an odd gift <clears throat> for an anniversary. It was our anniversary this It was on the 20th, which was Tuesday, and um, it was our 13th. And that is a lace or an textile. anniversary, but the more modern way is they, 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 they make it a, a textile one because it gives you a bit more scope because lace is not really... Um, in, in, in fashion, oh, actually, I'm not even sure for you for you would go to get lace, actually, because um, you'd probably order it online. I mean, it's lovely. I do I do like it. I have to say, but anyway, it's a it's a lace anniversary. But it wasn't a lacy dressing gown. It was just it, a cosy no, dressing gown. Some kind of fleecy. <laughs> just exactly fit you need in Thailand. Uh, Margaret Kerr is watching for Australia. Jane Robertson Philly. Ted Kramar is watching down the road in Northumberland. Janice Holler is in Ontario. Martin Mitchell and Bruno from France is watching, Alison McDonald from the San Francisco Bay Area and Margaret and Mardo in Lewis. Good. Well, that's just all our pals are here. That's just, just what you want to hear. Um, so hopefully you're um, going to enjoy the evening. Um, I will anyway, as long as I'm like an air so I take Oh, Mar Margo, uh, no, Edward Stewart says, thank you for playing Top of Tom the Bat. It was a nice surprise. Ah, good stuff, he Edward. Says, I'm still climbing it while I'm young. Aye, well, quite right. Keep going, keep going. Um, Edward's a great guy, he likes his fishing and he's taking the hills, he's going on these electric bikes which have just opened up a hail heap of hills, they're amazing things, um, in fact my mate um, Matt Mill, he um, turned up the other week, he'd got in, he'd got in a new electric bike and it, it goes like stink, it's, a, it's an amazing thing, I mean you've got to crank, you want to go at sell but see for going uphill it'll tuck you places that you would never take a normal bike really, a very capable Things so, oh. um, aye, so sure enough, I think Ian Russell say. says, Superb set, Paul, a feast of melody. Feast, well, I like the sound of that, Ian. Thank you very much. Um, should I say, Ian, Professor Russell MBE, yeah, <laughs> who just got his MBE there, just uh, just was it last week? Look, I thought I think or tw 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 we did say congratulations last week, we didn't again if he was here, so congratulations again, Ian. Right, well, I'm going to play, um, since it's our wedding anniversary, I'm going to play a tune I wrote for Shona. Oh. It's just got Shona Donaldson. This was written actually um, before the boys were even here or even, heck, that was even being expected. Um, so it's it's over 14 years ago now, must be. So anyway, um, I can't really mind much about fun I wrote it, but I think I was, I, I think I was at that concert with George Donald, I was playing it in um, Dufton. Um, nowadays would be the whiskey capital of the world, there's about seven distilleries in Dufton, but we had a concert there, and then I went back and met Sean at the Keith Folk Festival, and that's what I meant about that tune, so um, just get Sean a Donaldson for my wife, for my love. Oh, <laughs> what are you hunting for? Um, what, what would not bite with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, right, it's been a while, mind you.
Thank you. Sublime that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, come in and say something Aww. nice. Uh, well, I've got a few other fellows. Put, put it in the box. Oh, yeah, do the box then. What's in the box? 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 So, we have had a few guesses for the box. Jim Taylor thinks it could be cupboard keys. Anne Wyatt thinks a bottle opener and Shona Pearson thinks our wedding rings. It's not. Uh, you like it enough <laughs> and I play a bit, I can assure you it's right there. Yep. So it's not. One, one ring. ring to rule them all. <laughs> that's why we're married. And that's in the, the darkness, <laughs> bang them. Uh, yeah, so that's the box guesses. There's only been one guess for the whiskey. Sandy White thinks it's Hello Friday by Wuha Brewery. Yeah, well, it's um, it, beer. Okay. Oh, so did you, I say whiskey? You did. Oh, sorry. That's all right, though. <sighs> Good whiskey on the brain tonight. Uh, right, a few hellos. Anne in Sweden is watching. Hello, Anne. Aileen Barber, Ross Dickey. Alistair Gillis is watching. Mm -hmm. uh, Anne and Francie over in Hoth. Uh, Katinka Baxter and Kim Harris. And Janice Holler is saying she hopes it shall um, catch all of us tonight because there's a tornado warning in Ontario. Ooh. It's funny because I've got um, I've got a, a cousin in Ontario, in Timmins, and she was just saying that there's 10 centimetres, 10 centimetres of snow expected. Aye, that's something we've never experienced here in the Howa Kramar. Um, no, we've had 10 centimetres of snow. No, no, but, but tornadoes. Near tornado. <laughs> I mean, the first, first time I went to the States, actually, it was 1992. And we, we were in 29 states, I think, in the 10 week tour. It was called uh, Columbia Artists Organised it. It was called the Gathering of the Clans. I was a clan fiddler. And it was just a Scottish, um, a, a, what do you call it, a Scottish cabaret show, just traditional music. And. Um, uh, if I was going to say, um, I and we we're right in the Midwest, and I suppose it's kind of tornado alley where we were. And the high school we're playing, I mean, they've got some amazing auditoriums in some of the schools, and there was a tornado alarm went off. <laughs> I tell you, it put, put the wind right up me, like, um, as well as on the else. Well, quite literally, I saw it. I didn't mean it to sound like that, but um, yeah, it never happened, but it was a. a it left you with a very uneasy feeling. <laughs> so the thought that it actually might be just doing the road would be, um, you've got my um, sympathies on it. I hope it um, yeah, doesn't come to anything. So, um, is Roderick wanting something? He's he's waiting to play. Right, do you want to do it now then? Because yeah. yeah. okay. he's just going to rumble our boot just now. Okay, so. Oh, are you going to turn it? I, I can turn it if you want, or you can turn it. Um, he wants me to help him introduce. Up. Here we go. So Roddy's on the piano tonight. Um, and he's going to play a tune. Who taught you this tune, Roddy? My great granny in Huntman. What, what's her name? Um, great granny? Glad. Great granny Glad. Gladys. <laughs> and she is a brilliant piano player, isn't she? Yeah. And she taught you how to play this. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't actually know the name of it, do we? No. So if anybody knows the name of it, please put it in the comments. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready, Roddy? Mm -hmm. Right, I'll leave you to it. I thought that was pretty good. I think um, he'll be getting the star marks tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Everybody's saying, well done, Roddy. Brilliant. Lots of love coming in for that. Alison McDonald says, could Roddy get any cuter? <laughs> he is cute. He has other sides to his temperament, I will say that. <laughs> right. Okay. Well done, well done Roddy. That was a good job. Good job. Plays a fiddle, sings songs. He does other sort of entertaining little things as well, but Dancing. maybe Dancing. for maybe for another <laughs> another night. So thank you, Roderick. Well done. Star turn. Right, I'm going to play a tune that I wrote um, 
just this week for a couple of pals. This is um, a new waltz. This is called, um, I've got the music here. <laughs> this is called um, Les and Dave Ellis of Rickett Lane. Um, Rickett Lane's just up at um, the east end of the Howard Kamar. And I suppose, I suppose it must be to do with smoke, reek, like the, the, the rain is Rickett full of smoke. So I reckon that that relates to, um, somebody pro probably kens the story, but I did ask my folks and they didn't really ken. So um, anyway, I wrote this for them. So um, we'll give it a go. So first public outing. Let's see what we get on with it. Um, and I think they quite liked it. Like I said, anyway. Uh, any notifications well, after I my last thing? Oh, uh, I was just going to come in and say um, that a lot of folk were saying chopsticks for Roddy's tune. That's not it. No. I didn't think. I think this is chopsticks. Isn't it? That's it. Chopsticks. Otherwise, I would have unless, said unless it's a, unless it's a it second chopsticks. movement of chopsticks. <laughs> a second movement. Um, yeah. So maybe it is chopsticks. I don't know. Uh, there's been a few guesses for the box. Katinka Baxton thinks uh, the box cap of a champagne bottle. Ian Russell thinks Pla Bobbies. Paul Gray thinks the bride and groom from the top of our wedding cake. And Alison McDonald thinks a tiny pumpkin. Okay. Right. Well, no others. Maybe no. right so far. Um, there is a f fairly big range of things it could be, I suppose, but the difference is it's going to be able to fit in that box, so there's a limit to fit to all going. Oh, it... Ula's saying we've got a reflection of that light in the picture behind you. Yeah, we've of... always got a reflection of the light because it's the main light in the living room, and if we turned it off, it would be too dark. Oh, so, unless we move the picture. It's like we're, we're sitting it with a torch in our face and a power cut if we turn the yeah. big light off. So, we kind of do on how we do it. Again, it's a nice picture. Um, it's a it's a copy by Joseph Farkerson and my granny said that money that's um, shepherd in the sheep is a relative. So there you go. Uh, Sandy White's got a question. Sandy, for your question. Why is there never on a resin pudder on Paul's fiddle? Because he cleans it. Because I clean my <laughs> fiddle after I finish it every single time. Early bit of um, firm instruction from a fiddle teacher you clean your fiddle every time you finish and um i've got a very dim view of fiddles that are cluttered with rosin oh, um, it's not very it's not good for the, the wood if actually if you imagine just a layer of rosin sitting on it, it just doesn't allow the wood to vibrate to its full extent and i think some folk it's just to like the look of it, it looks like you do a lot of playing i just think it looks cluttery so there you yeah. go <laughs> But I, I just think it's um, it's your singing voice, you have to look after it, and um, it deserves all the care, care and uh, attention it can. So there you go, I polish it as well. So there you go. Well, apparently there's several versions of chopsticks. Is there? Okay, well there so you go. So maybe it is chopsticks. So on a why, there, that was Roddy's tune. Yeah. So I'm going to finish off with a wee metal. Again, there's some of my own tunes actually. Um, the first thing is called Falkland. I wasn't going to play it, but I thought, oh, what the hell, we'll get a go. And... Um, 
we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I don't know really care, it, obviously. So we're going to play that. Falkland was written at Falkland, doing in Fife, um, during the festival. Um, I'd finished my um, uh, duties, I kind of was doing concerts at the festival, and it's, it is one of my favourite tunes, Falkirk. It's absolutely beautiful. Falkland, not Falkirk. How did I say Falkirk? You said Falkirk. Falkland. I think well, it doesn't matter anyway. Uh, Falkland, it's beautiful. I mean, it's so picturesque. I've even used it as um, uh, some of the scenery and um, is it Outlander? I'm led to believe. I don't know watch it, but anyway, but it is. It looks the part. It's, it's a lovely place. And um, I wrote it one night. I was sitting up quite late. So there you go, Falkland for a start, and then we're going to play Bonacore John, which is written for a, a John Fuchs. Um, um, a, a pal, oh, a heap of pals, can folk go to the festivals, um, great um, supporters of traditional music and John is into his locomotives and trains and he's very keen on it and is one of the folk that um, volunteers at uh, Krathis at the, at the train place there, I can't remember if it's a card there. They've re recreated a bit of the LD side line and even have one of the royal carriages there. So John's a bit, he's a real expert in that and um, a fine chap. And I've been promising I've got to play his tune for him for a few weeks. So I'm going to play that eh, Bon Accord John and then finish with a real kind of back hall, which um, was written for, um, well, it was a, a Gilly's Balls, I think. We're playing the back hall. That's for Prince Charles Bides when he's up in D side and Sean and I were were at it and um, I was playing at it so I wrote this tune for that um, back hall that was actually the Queen Mother's residence when she was up and um, it was left to Prince Charles so it's a, it's a lovely house it feels like a house as you'd expect a house rather than a, a formal castle you can stately home it feels like somewhere that's comfy to live in and has a warm atmosphere well, anyway so I'm going to play that again these are just these tunes I play very much so we'll see how we go on Ladies and gentlemen, highlight of the night, Shona Donaldson. <laughs> I'm just going to take my water. Get a wee flash of kelp there, just a touch of the spot on. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I've got a few hellos to do. 
Um, oh, I'm just lagging the crack in my mouth. Um, who have we got? Uh, Frank and Lorraine are watching over in a boy. Sandy Archer, hello Sandy and Odd Leguinec in Gala Shells. Paul, there's a bit of paper for your hellos. Oh, well, uh, nice. And uh, a few guesses for the box and for the laggers. Uh, so the lager, Frank Ribbons thinks it could be homebrew, Paul. Nope. Nope. Uh, Shirley Fuchs thinks windswept and Ian Russell thinks bitter and twisted. <laughs> uh, hopefully that is the lager and not us. Uh, and for the box, we've got a few guesses for the box. Uh, Shirley thinks crochet hooks or nappy brains. Paul Gray, this, he always has a really good specific one. Paul th says, uh, the toilet seat port side hinge for the downstairs clodgy. Watch it in a sky off. And that is really weird because our toilet seat is actually broken at the moment and I've got to get new screws for it. It feels, it feels like Paul's been in my house, Paul. <laughs> Even though maybe well, he is. <laughs> so although it isn't that, it is a really good guess and it's exactly if it's good on in our clodgy just now. Uh, Frank thinks a genie is in the box and he's getting annoyed at being rattled around. And Katinka Baxton thinks a whistle. There you go. Okay. Um, I am going to turn this light down ever so slightly because my mum said it was quite bright. So let's see if this works. Is that better? That's doing slightly. Probably they make much of a difference. Anyway, like Paul said, we had our 13th wedding anniversary on Tuesday. And uh, Paul played my tune, which was very nice. I actually have written Paul a tune. Um, but I, I actually never even thought about playing it the night. I maybe mm -hmm. should have done that. Because um, Paul writes tunes for Abdi, but I do think, have you got any tunes yourself? You're, you've never written a tune for yourself. I have had a couple of yeah. poems, well, I wrote one, sculptures, paintings. You have. I wrote your tune for your 40th birthday, so I will maybe summon up my courage and play that at some point. Um, but I am actually going to sing the song. I've sung it before on Live from the Lounge. But I'm going to sing the song that I walked up the aisle to. I'm saying walked up the aisle, but I pretty much ran. Um, I can actually remember, we got married in Fivey Castle and the, the woman was there that was like the wedding coordinator woman and she was just making sure everything was okay and, and I was standing with my dad just waiting to go in and Paul was up at the end of the aisle and everybody was there and George Donald was on the piano. He was he was playing the, the music for us walking up and the, for the hymns as well. And uh, I can actually remember me starting to walk up the aisle and the wedding coordinator wifey ahead my gun, slow down, slow down, because I was just so excited to get married. Isn't that nice, Paul? I was mm -hmm. so excited to see you. So uh, this is the song that I walked up the aisle to and it's Mary of Argyle. <clears throat> <coughs> Can you just give me a D please, Paul? <clears throat> That's not the right. I'll just, I'll just go for it. I have heard the mavis singing as a love song to the morn. I have seen the dewdrop clinging to the rose just newly born. But a sweet heart song has cheered me at this evening's gentle close and i've seen an eye still brighter than that you did upon the rose twas thine voice my gentle mary and thine heartless winning smile that has made this world and Eden. Bonnie Mary of Argyle. Though thy voice may lose its sweetness and thine eye its brightness too. Though thy step may lack in fleetness, and thine hair its sunny hue, still to me wilt thou be dearer than all the world shall own. 
I have loved thee for thy beauty, but not for that alone. I have watched thine heart, dear Mary, and its goodness was the while that has made thee mine. Forever, Bonnie Mary. Oh, 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 years ago, Paul, we had a hell of a party, didn't we? It actually, was it was epic. Uh, we actually had to seek the Gordon Arms and Huntley to get extra whiskey in, and uh, they they actually ran out of whiskey. Uh, well, folk were going up to the bar asking for a Glen Onifin, and uh, when we went back, there was a few things we needed to pick up the day after. Do you mind that? And uh, and uh, the guy said, um, you know, m most weddings are usually either big drinking crowds or big dancing crowds. You guys were both. <laughs> <laughs> so he did lots of drinking and lots of dancing. <laughs> uh, Ian Russell said that he actually <clears throat> sang that at his parents' golden wedding anniversary. Oh, it is such a bonny song. Yeah. And you know, every time I sing it, I'm saying it out and about, not that I've been singing out and about, but um, every time I have sung it out and about, there's always somebody comes up to me and says, oh, my, my dad used to sing that or my granny used to sing that. And there's so many memories that come back with it. It's just a bonny, bonny song. Yeah, a lot of folk really like that. Yeah, um, thank you. Beautifully sung, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, oh. And Taylor says maybe sings it like you, and your oh. uncle Tommy agreed. Ah, oh. so so very That's very nice. nice. Um, Andrew Brandy thinks it's a lump of rosette in oh, the box. Oh, in the box. Do you want me to get a wee shovel? Yeah. <laughs> and he's guessing it's the Lawrence Kirk Brewery. Mhm. Mm um, with um Gordon Campbell looking at for the Hello, Shields. Gordon. With um Margaret Howie for hmm. Des. Uh, Paul Gray thinks says it's the closest he's ever been to guessing right. I know you're uh, still wrong, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry Lash said it's definitely chopsticks. There's a few different versions, apparently. Um, Badger says, "Is it I'm still no? It's not Scottish." Um, and Alison McDonald thinks it's the D side brewery. Yep. So there you okay. go. And that's us up to date. Okay, cool. I'm going to sing one more song just now. Um, I was looking up all the dates and whatnot for what's been happening around about the 20, 23rd, isn't it? The 23rd. And um, yesterday, uh, in 1989, was the day that Ewan McCall died. So he died on the 22nd of October, October 1989. He was born... In 1915 and he died in 1989 so I thought I would sing a Ewan McCall song. Um, so this is a song that I used to sing when I was about 15 and uh, I'm just gonna sing it it's got a chorus if you want to join in it's uh, come all you fish our lassies or the song of the fish cutters so I'm just gonna get a oh Paul are you busy doing something can you give me a bottom E sorry Okay, let's give this a bash. Come, a uh, you fish out, lasses, I and come awa with me. Fe care and bog and gimri and fe am varalahi. Fe bucky and fe peter heed in the country run. Where awa te got the heron, where awa te am a tun. You rise up in the morning we your bundle in your hand. Be at the station early, oh, you're surely here to stand. Tuck plenty to eat and a kettle for your tea, or you'll maybe die of hunger on the white yard key. Come all you fish out, lasses, I and come all with me. Fe ker and bog and gimri and fe and varalahi. Fe bucky and fe pitar heed and all the country run. We're a wa te gut the heron, we're a wa te yarmouth tun. The journey it's a long in it all took a day or twa. And fin you reach your lodge and sure it's soon asleep you'll fa. But you'll rise at five with a sleep still in your ee. You're a wa to find the cotton yards along the Yarmouth Key. 
Come a ye for shall I say Zion, come all with me. The care and bog and gamery and fe and varala he, fe bucky and fe peter heed and ha the country run. We're a wa to gut the heron, but a wa to yarmouthoon. It's early in the morning and it's late into the night. Your hands are cut and chop it and they look an unca sight. And you'll greet like a wean fin, you pet them in the brie. And you wish you were a thousand mile awa for Yarmouth Key. Come I ye for shall I says I and come awa with me. Fe care and bog and gamery and fe and barala he. Fe bucky and fe peter heed and ha the country run. We're awa to gut the heron with a wa to Yarmouth town. There's coopers there and curers there and buyers canny chills and lusses at the picklin and ebbers at the creels and you wish the fish had been all that left in the sea by the time you finish cutting here and on the Yarmouth Key. Come a ye for shall I says I and come awa with me Fe care and bog and gamery and fe and varala he Fe bucky and fe peter heed and a the country run Ye're a wa to gut the heron where a wa to Yarmouth town We've got it fish and lairwick and storn away in shields Who worked along the humber amongst the barrels and the creels Who it be Grim's Bay we've travelled up and down But the place to see the heron is the key in Yarmouth town Come a ye for shall I says I and come awa with me Fe care and bog and gamery and fe and varawa he Fe bucky and fe peter heed and a the country run Where awa to gut the heron Where awa to Yarmouth town Fish cutters by you and McCall. There you go. You got any the any announcements? Uh, no, really. The only update was Sandy White has pitched in um, a guess at the beer. He thinks is it Shahalian? So there you go. That's another oh, guess. My mum's just reminding me that I, I nearly the day after our wedding, I nearly had to do the ultimate walk of shame. You, I'm sure you've seen them in the tune from the lasses have been out the night before and and had gone home and have had to walk home in the clothes that they've had on. The night before, oh, I forgot to take a change of clothes with me on our wedding day, and I nearly had to walk down to my mum and dad's through Huntley in my wedding dress. But thankfully, Paul went down and got my change of clothes, so I didn't hate to do the ultimate walk of shame. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll pass over to you, Paul. Take care, thank you. Yep. Right. Oh, watch out the cables. Oh, your cables. So, ah, oh, there was a real Kaylee got going the next day because of some money. Um, musicians and singers that um, were guests at the wedding and a, and a lot of them were biding in Huntley that day so um, by the time she, well I was doing went back with Clyde for sure by the time we both come back there was a proper Kayleigh going um, soup was on sh showing his granny and my granny were sitting kind of ensconced giggling a while singing giggling turns out they were singing dirty songs to each other <laughs> But it was a pretty, it was a proper Kelly in a true sense of the word, and showed us Granny had a dull on the piano, and would, oh, it was a great, great day. Actually. I just wanted to do it again. Yeah, 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 but we can't go very far, I'm afraid. So yeah. there you go. Oh, uh, Gordon Calder says he was supposed to see Ozzy Osbourne in Glasgow this weekend, but it's been rescheduled. But our concert more than makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, up yours, Ozzy. <laughs> I like Ozzy Osbourne, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm joking when I say that. Um, Osborne been interviewed quite a few times actually, I used to be on quite regular on things like Radio 2 from we were, were Milk and Coos <laughs> we listened to the radio and Ozzy Osborne would, would come on and he was he was very entertaining he had some hilarious stories, I mean he was enough a boy like, he was enough a rascal um, but um, one of my favourite ones was um, when he got banned for his son Antonio for peeing on the Alamo, he did the Ken it was the Alamo but uh, his wife Sharon had locked him in his room and Tina Wise Clyes because he was he'd been on a batter and he was just an absolute menace. So she locked him in the room and took his Clyes away, 
And so <laughs> when he woke up, he decided, I'm getting out of here. So he dressed up in one of her frocks and climbed out the window. And he was just, eventually, just said he was in that pee, and he just stood up to eat to this war. Next thing he kept, the bobbies were lifting him, and it was, it was the actual Alamo, which, I mean, that's, it's almost like a religious place in mm. Texas. You kind of do that. So, but he, he honestly did the Kenny, he, he far he was. <laughs> but there you go. I think they've forgiven him now, but um, he, he's an awful boy, isn't he? Ozzy Osbourne. So, I'm going to go back to Dar Guy and um, play James Scott Skinner's tune card, Dar Guy, and it's written as a P-Brock, but um, f um, it's not quite to the same extent as a proper Highland bagpipe P-Brock, which has got various different stages of variations. It's a theme with variations that get more compli complicated. It's got one theme and one variation, and that's probably enough, but it, it definitely has the strains of P-Brock, and um, it's, a, it's a lovely tune. It was a great favourite of mine um, as, as a youngster, and I can mine Stopping at the heat of the Cairn Amount Road. Um, well, I think I probably would have had a major sulk if we hadn't. I'd ask my folks, could they stop? I wanted to play on the top of the hill in the way home, and they did that, so I was quite highly delighted with myself. I think it was a spiritual moment for a young man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, well, I've, I've said enough as, as, as I want to say about the heights of Dargai and the Gordon Highlanders, but if you, I Google it, I mean, you can see photos of the place. It's quite. Um, Amazing what they did that day. Nails and screws. Oh, wrong. Th th 
sorry. Um, Jamie Bowers thinks an old coin. Oh no, a coin, sorry. Mm -hmm. Harry Lash thinks tin soldier. Sandy White wedding favours. Frank Ribbons keering on a wee chain. Margaret Stewart brogue buckles. And Joe thinks Dougal's lead. Okay. Right, well, we're safe so far. Yep. Um, you'll need to do better on that, folks, because um, Nibby's right. Nope. Right, a couple of James Scott's kind of tunes to finish. Um, first thing is a request. Um, I was asked to play Sir William Wallace again by Skinner, so I'm going to play that and then finish off with his reel, The Hurricane, which is a. It goes in perfect. That's why I'm playing that. And I like it. That's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> from um, the dialysis ward in ERI. Hello, Andrew. Um, I kind of hope we're helping to shove in a few hours there. Uh, we've had a few guesses about the beer or the lager. Gillian uh, thinks it might be Brewdog Punk IPA. Uh, and Jamie Bowers thinks Caledonian Juchers. Uh, and the box, I'm going to get away that off. 
Jamie Bowers thinks earrings, Hugh Adelsey thinks an astrolabe. Now I had to go and Google this because I didn't account for it was, but it's an analog calculator for astronomy. Yeah. That be about right? Sounds all right. Yeah. Uh, Katinka Baxton thinks it's a two pound coin. Uh, Gillian Needham thinks a pocket watch chain and Heather Morrison thinks unsucked granny sugars. <laughs> Better than the if, if they were sook, they wouldn't be there. Um, <coughs> okay, okay. So I'm going to sing a couple of songs. Uh, I'm just, sorry, I'm just getting all my stuff ready here. Um, so there's been quite a lot happening today. I told you that yesterday you and McCall died in 1989. Well, today is the 23rd, and it was it, it's it is the national mole day and i don't mean more like like a freckle mole i mean like a little kind of animal mole sorry that was my my impression of a mole i didn't know what to do how do you, you describe what a mole is we had a mole in the garden during lockdown it was oh, a little a, one and uh, quite it, good at catch them. i know it was so cute though but today is national mole day and you might be thinking I'm going to sing I am a mole and I live in a hole. I am not going to sing that. You're never going to guess this. I'm going to sing you Jacobites by name. And you might be thinking, what has that got to do with moles? Well, I will tell you. National Mole Day is today. And in 1702, William III of England died from pneumonia, which was a complication from breaking his collarbone after he fell off his horse. Now, it was believed that his horse stumbled in a mole hill and as a result, many Jacobites then toasted the little gentleman in the black velvet waistcoat. Isn't that quite exciting? I, I really liked that. I thought that was really cute. I'm going to call what? moles the little gentleman in uh, the black velvet waistcoats well, from William now on. was not pleased about that. William was not so pleased about the situation, but the little, uh, lots of toasts for the little gentleman in the black velvet waistcoat. So there you go. That's why I'm going to sing you Jacobites by name. <clears throat> and I'm going to get a note. Sorry. It's okay. I'll just grab my own fiddle. I think that's right. Oh, well. Ye Jacobites by name, give an ear, give an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, give an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, ye fought so well proclaim. Ye doctrines I mun blame, you mun hear, ye mun hear. Ye doctrines I mun blame, you mun hear. What is right and what is wrong by the law, by the law? What is right and what is wrong by the law? What is right and what is wrong? A short soul down along, a weaker man a strong for to draw, for to draw, a weaker man a strong for to draw. What makes heroic strife? Fame the far, fame the far. What makes heroic strife? Fame the far. What makes heroic strife? For to wet the assassin's knife, or hunt a parent's life with bloody war, bloody war, or hunt a parent's life with bloody war. Then let your schemes alone in the state, in the state. Then let your schemes alone in the state. Then let your schemes alone, adore the rising sun, and leave a man undone to his fate, to his fate, and leave a man undone to his fate. Ye yeah, Jacobites by name, give an ear, give an ear, ye yeah, Jacobites by name, give an ear. Ye Jacobites by name, ye fought so well proclaim, ye doctrines I mun blame, you shall hear, you shall hear, ye doctrines I mun blame, you shall hear. 
And cheers to the little gentleman in the black velvet waistcoat. <laughs> Paul, Paul Gray says it's a great song, but he says you say his links are tenuous. Well, <laughs> I could have just sung I am a mole and I live in a hole. I think that's a great bit of trivia, actually. It is. That's the kind of nonsense that uh, I... I get really excited about hearing. Like, right, are you going to wish me around then and I can yeah. do this next song? Oh, actually, I thought you go, Tracy Ardlesey says she, they've got a mole in the freezer. You better ask her about that, but... Um... Okay. <laughs> so, right. Well, right, Paul's going to wish me around and I'm going to go and... Uh... Sorry, there you go, Paul. Yep. Hello. <laughs> right, we'll turn your own show up. Right, here we go. How's that? There we go. Hi, that's fine. Is that okay? Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, so, uh, for my last song tonight, we've had quite a, we've had three songs to do with the date, actually, because uh, we had the Ewan McCall song and then we had the Mole, National Mole Day. And today on the 23rd, um, in 2012, so eight years ago on the 23rd of October, Michael Mara died. And I thought I'm going to sing a Michael Mara song for you. A lot of folk think this should be the alternative national anthem for Scotland. Scots were you? Yeah. Um, this song I first heard in the Al Pitt in Huntley, at the Huntley Folk Club. And it was um, Keithy Coburn sung it. And uh, this just uh, reminds me of Keithy Coburn. I can't sing this song without thinking of him. So, it's harmless. And if you can, it join in. <clears throat> Paul's going to do a bit of people in a room in the background and a... Is that, that's the technical term, sorry. Okay. Right, I'll give this a bar. <clears throat> sorry, I've got... If I pull that in the... Yeah, okay, right. Nor can he and me, as can be. There's time we as pigeons, and well we as stamps, and our 
I can do the way back. Oh, there we go. Hiya. Is that all right? Is that all right there? <laughs> all right, I don't know. I'm back a wee bit. Here we go. This is, we need stage crew, I think. I must say, this is feeling more like a proper gig because I've got a light on me. It's like a TV program. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. What do you think? There was one correct guess. No, there was two actually. Was it? Yeah, there was two. Oh, I thought it was just the one. No, there was two. Uh, Jamie Bowers and Sandy White got it right. Congratulations, you two. And there it goes. Doing a hatch. Doing a hatch. What was it? It is... Shehalian. There you go. Shehalian? Yeah. Dad brought that. Harvesting dad. Brewery. My dad bought that. Yeah. He's been up Shehalian. Yeah, Shehalian, oh, it's, a, it's a great beauty spot. Back in the days of the Picts, apparently it was considered a holy mountain. There you go, and I can be a kind of but it had great cultural significance and was um, thought to be a magical place. Is Shahalian quite pinty? It is. It's, Aye, um, it's kind of quite <laughs> yeah. conical, okay. would be the word. Pinty. <laughs> pinty. That's, uh, what, that's what it is in the Monroe book. It's kind of, see that pinty hill? <laughs> well, Benny Key's quite pinty enough. Yeah, it's quite pinty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, right. what's in the box? 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 What's in the but she's had them for a long time. It's shells. Seashells. She sells seashells by the seashore. <laughs> exactly what I was about to say. Yes. We're, we're nicely matched, Paul. Look at that one. That's a Shehalian shaped shell. Well, that's that's right. Right. It's a Shehalian shaped shell. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird name. That's like, it's kind of... It's a horny looking name. Ah, it is. <laughs> I'm not keen on that name. It's a horny looking devil as we look. I'm just going to chuck it in there. So we got so, them from my granny ages and ages and ages ago and she had them for... Oh, I can mind seeing them in our house when Back I was in the little. days when your granddad was a deep sea diver. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, that spit was in the box. That Next week, box. well, considering it's Halloween, will it be a Halloween themed thing in the box? Maybe no. Maybe no. Maybe I Maybe no. If it is in the box. Um, so, like Paul said, <laughs> next week, we being the day before Halloween, we're going to dress up. And if you would like to dress up in Janus, oh, go on, you can go please, on, go please, on. Be, um, so if you tick photos, and then you can put your photos in, and we'll, 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 we can I hear a look at your photos. That'd be ace, <laughs> wouldn't it? I'd dress up. Um, and the boys will maybe dress up. We'll maybe do a dukin for apples or something like that. Right, so here's Roderick. Come on, you better take oh, your Roderick, final you better bow. come in and say hello, Roddy. Oh, play da, 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 Got a bow? Got a bow? Take a bow. <laughs> good job Roddy good. Um, so we're going to finish up yeah so um, if you have enjoyed tonight and you fancy putting something in the tip jar that would be appreciated um, it's www.paypal.me forward slash Paul Anderson shown it on that's it a better tongue twister is that I saw Cynthia Scything Thistles that's hard to say oh Paul Cynthia Scything Thistles. Okay, there's one at my, my great uncle Jack um, Young Hedin that I've never forgotten. I mind him teaching us. Is it rude? 
not really. It's <laughs> kind of a little bit smutty, but it's all right. It's one smart fellow who felt smart, two smart fellows, and they both felt smart. Three smart fellows, and they all felt smart. Well Try done. And say that. Well done. And Ula, it was Mrs. Jameson's favourite that you heard, but it was played in D rather than A. Yeah. Right, okay, what are we going to play? We're going to finish off we, a tune we heard last night. We did. Um, we heard this last we night. Watched, I hadn't watched it for years, actually. Braveheart. It was on the telly. Historically, it's loosely based on the, the big man himself, loosely. Sir William Wallace. But uh, historically, it's not that accurate. But there you go. It's a, it's a, it is a great film. It's, it's a Hollywood it's, film. It's, it's, it's a spectacle. It, it's an it's an amazing film for its period, and actually, it did focus a lot of interest on Scottish history. Um, although it seemed to have spawned a hell heap of folk and broom kilts and banging drums. And uh, saltires and uh, I see, uh, face painting and stuff like that. It, unfortunately, I mean, that was kind of out of fashion by about 500 years by that time, but there you go. Um, but we introduced Hector to Braveheart. Hector yep. had never seen it before, so we let him bide up late last night because it's the school holidays. And... He's feeling very Scottish today, let's put it that way. <laughs> well, he did last night, I thought he was in his bed. He's not really said much today, but uh, yeah. he did enjoy it. He enjoyed there it. you go. So, there's we a tune this. in it, in the wedding scene, there's a couple that play the real Tullach, and I do like it when they actually make an effort to get traditional tunes, and a tune called Clean Peace Straight. Now, they, these tunes weren't written at the period of William Wallace, but they are authentic Scottish traditional tunes. So, we're going to finish off with Clean Peace Straight. There's, there's words to it as well, but I don't know. Um, right. How many times are you doing it? Three. We've not actually played this together before. Oh, it'll, be, it'll be all right. <laughs> Three times. How are you finishing it? Da ba da ba da dum. Ba dum. Chord or no chord? Oh, we'll just see what happens. <laughs> well, we'll see. We've been married for thirteen years. We'll be able to communicate <laughs> mentally. Ah, uh, you mean you'll give me a kick under the under the camera? <laughs> Here, we'll, um, yep. I'll be doing a workshop on uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow I am judging the fiddle competitions at the Perth Accordion and Fiddle Championships of Scotland. Virtually. Virtually, hi. I'll be sitting and hosting it, but it'll be great to actually feel like you're doing something. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and the morning's night, if you've not had to do the morning's night at half past seven on the Hands Up for Trad Facebook page, it's the Scots Language Awards, which I'm up for Performer of the Year, and I also recorded a wee... Uh, set I did three songs yep. so that will be shown during the night as well so you can watch that online if you fancy it yeah well, it should be yeah, it'll be yeah. good it'll be good support yeah. the our indigenous languages whether it be Gaelic or Scots yeah. there you absolutely. go absolutely oh good so, that's us okay. we'll see you see next you later week. and we'll be back next week ooh Halloween spooky spooky themed um, <laughs> shenanigans so we'll see you later folks take care have a good night have a nice weekend and we'll see you next week cheerio